cities, bastions of human flourishing, where culture, business, art, and technology interweave in a quilt of human Sir David accomplishment. <laughs> yes. Oh my God! Wow, it's uh, it's an honor. First off. But um, actually, I think, with all due respect, I've, I've got it from here. Are you sure? Yeah. It's no. planted by a college student. Okay. God, I need a drink. As Sir David Attenborough was saying, cities are pretty great. But if you remove your rose-colored, smog-covered glasses and look at them earnestly, you might form a different opinion. They may be the epicenters of human society. I mean, 50% of the global population lives in cities. But they're also the focal point of a lot of humanity's problems, namely the environmental crisis and the mental health crisis. Thankfully, though, there might be a common solution we can use to help solve both of those problems simultaneously. The human habitat, the concrete jungle. If we're an invasive species, our cities are invasive ecosystems. Trees are replaced by buildings, rivers by roads, stars by street lamps. And although cities only take up about 0.2 to 2.4% of total land area, the environmental destruction that comes with their construction is unparalleled. A 50% loss of local species richness and a 38% loss of total species abundance compared to a natural habitat. Not to mention their rampant production of greenhouse gases as a result of transportation, buildings, energy production, and waste management. Cities alone are responsible for about 75% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Those are startling statistics, considering how little land they occupy and how much they're expected to grow in size and number in the coming decades. Furthermore, cities not only disproportionately harm the environment, but possibly us too. Generally speaking, mental illness is on the rise. In fact, it's one of the only battles within healthcare that we're actively losing. Looking at the average death rates per 100,000 people within the United States from 1999 to 2017 for different causes of death, we see a strange trend. Whereas the average death rates of cancer, heart disease, and stroke have decreased by about 16.4%, 38.1%, and 38.1% respectively, suicide has actually increased by 33.3% in the same time frame. More specifically, and a little more relevant to myself, there's been a similarly frightening trend amongst college students. From 2013 to 2021, 350,000 students from 373 different schools were surveyed each year. And in 2021, 60% of those students fit the criteria for one or more mental illness, which is a 50% increase from the results in 2013. But what does this have to do with cities? Well, now that you know that there's a general upward trend in mental illness, cities actually exacerbate these issues. Various studies have shown that incidences of psychosis and depression are higher amongst people living in urban areas compared to rural ones. Additionally, similar trends can be seen for anxiety and schizophrenia. Thus, living in an urban center may actually cause or hyperbolize mental illness. Thus far, we've looked at two problems currently plaguing humanity and how cities actually exaggerate them. But thankfully, since there's commonality in their cause, so too is their similarity in their solution. And what is that solution? Municipal parks. Municipal parks are parks that carry around little baby parks in their stomach pouch. Oh no wait, that would be a marsupial park. No, municipal parks are city parks. Public green spaces or forests within a city's limits. Now, since I'm in St. Louis, I thankfully have access to the country's largest municipal park, Forest Park. No, we just did that. We don't have to, uh, whatever. Go ahead. The reason city parks may be a powerful method for combating these crises is because they're a way to bring nature into the city. Obviously, this does wonders for the local environment, specifically biodiversity and habitat loss. And the bigger the park, the better. Thankfully, Forest Park here in Missouri is the biggest, and its effects are certainly noticeable. Across its 1,300 acres of various habitats, wildlife and plant life thrive. There's one specific area of the park, the Nature Reserve, which consists of 194 acres of native forest habitat. 
over 600 species of plants, 200 species of pollinators, 200 species of insects, and various animals such as deer, fox, and coyote all call this their home. Also, over 200 different species of birds visit throughout the year. It's hard to believe that this place is in the middle of a city. In addition to their benefits to the local wildlife, municipal parks also help mitigate some of the city's more direct impacts on the environment itself. For example, the trees here in Forest Park save energy by mitigating the heat island effect and providing a buffer from wind. Drafty windows aren't as drafty if there's a tree outside of them. Their shade helps cool urban surfaces, and the transpiration of water from their leaves cools the surrounding air. Overall, these trees alone save the city 681.7 megawatt hours of energy per year. Energy that would likely be produced via natural gas. Which brings us to their next benefit, CO2 reduction. Whether through sequestration or decreasing energy demand, each species of tree in the park sequesters or saves hundreds to thousands of pounds of CO2 each year. Furthermore, Forest Park's trees also help improve air quality. They absorb pollutants and intercept particulate matter, all whilst releasing sweet, sweet oxygen. Overall, these wonderfully important plants provide an estimated $1,211,496 of environmental and economic benefits to the city of St. Louis annually. Now that we've looked at how municipal parks help solve the environmental crisis, let's look at their effect on mental health. The biophilia hypothesis claims that human beings benefit from being in nature because we evolved in nature. There are two prevailing theories that summarize these benefits, stress reduction theory and attention restoration theory. According to the former, being in or even simply seeing natural landscapes helps reduce stress and improve overall mood. For example, studies have shown that walking in a natural environment decreases rumination and neural activity in the subgenual prefrontal cortex, which are both typically involved in the development of mood disorders like depression. Additionally, spending time within nature is associated with decreased levels of stress and anxiety, as well as increased levels of creativity. Furthermore, in support of attention restoration theory, when comparing research groups that walked in an urban environment versus a natural one, the latter performed better on cognitive and attentional function tasks after their walk. So it's quite possible that nature can help clear our minds, improve our memory, and fix our attention. Therefore, municipal parks can directly benefit the mental health of city residents. Not only do they provide a break from the urban, but also a much needed dose of nature. The interconnectedness of these two crises and the spirit of municipal parks, I think speaks to a more grandiose solution. A shift in perspective and a shift in mindset. The acknowledgement that environmental interest is human interest. Whether we like it or not, we evolved within this natural system. But it appears over time, we've just become more and more unnatural. And I firmly believe that it is this disconnect between us and the world around us that's the root of so many of our problems, and thus also the solution. But there's only so much I can say to really convince you of that. And the best advocate for nature is nature. So turn your phone off or close the tab, whatever you're watching this on, put it down and just go outside.